Hello, David. Hello, Lou. Good to have you. You are a, a communication expert. You led millions of people to have breakthrough in their lives. So it's really, really great to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful to be with you. So, so tell me about, about your, your work. Tell me about what it is, how it feels for you to be, uh, how it is to be a Landmark Forum leader out in the world. Well, you know, our work at Landmark Education is uh, undebatable in the, uh, its success rate at having people produce breakthroughs, both in their personal lives, in their career lives, and in their communities. So uh, to watch literally thousands and thousands of people all over the world move to new levels of self-expression, freedom, power, that is fulfilling and that is our work and it is wonderful to watch. So what did you have to give up yourself in your own life to, to be in this place right now of doing this and helping other people transform their lives? Well, what I had to give up in my own life, of course, was all the self-doubt I had, all the decisions I'd made about myself as I was growing up because that's what we do as human beings. We have life events and in those life events we often decide, we decide things like we're not capable of certain things or we're not powerful enough to accomplish certain things or there's certain things we're not good at or just certain things that are impossible for us. And when each of us can distinguish and identify those decisions we've made and then those disappear and we're left free to pursue what's really important to us. I had to go through that myself and that's what we coach people in going through. Yeah, but it's like an ongoing process, isn't it? There's always something to let go of. <laughs> oh, it never stops. You know, even today, even getting ready for this interview with you, one more time I had to think through, okay, what do I think I'm not good at and what do I think is not, is not, I'm not going to be good enough at and, you know, it's right here, right now, today. It's never, it never stops. Uh -huh. So you have this little process that you also do because the landmark form, from my understanding, is uh, is a hundred, two hundred, or more people gathering together and and sharing their lives and 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 what you call breakthrough, right? There is mm -hmm. they make breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. Well, what allows for a breakthrough result is really to have some new opening, to see some new opening that you didn't see before, that there's some new pathway to accomplish something that literally you didn't see before. So it never comes from what we already know. It never comes from the past. It is, it is a process of letting the past go and then having, uh, being able to see something you never saw before that's possible for you. That's what allows for a breakthrough result. Mm, so that's, that's how you define a breakthrough? What, what would be a breakthrough then? A, a breakthrough result is a kind of result that's not linear, Lulu. In other words, if we just go day by day, usually you and I are getting a little bit stronger, a little bit better every day, a little bit more competent at things that we're working on, at least those things that we're at work on and you know having some practice with. So when things improve incrementally, that wouldn't be a breakthrough. A breakthrough is when there's actually a leap, a quantum leap forward in your effectiveness, a quantum leap forward in your fulfillment or your joy or your self-expression. And that leap is one that you wouldn't expect, one that you couldn't predict. It's just that afterwards, all you know, you're operating at a new level of effectiveness that fulfills you and satisfies you. You're really thrilled with. That's what a breakthrough result is. So how can we do that? How can we make this happen? Well, the first thing you have to do is make sure that the past lets go. One of, if the past has a grip on your life, and it often does, when there's, again, as I said, things that happened in the past that are, things that happened in the past that uh, we've made decisions about, that there's a limit to what we can accomplish, or we've made decisions about there's, some, there's something about us that's just not strong or good or competent. First, just distinguishing the decisions we've made. We don't have to change the decisions. That's positive thinking. It doesn't work. When you can distinguish a decision, when you know that you've made something up and you really get that it's made up because something that's made up just can't be true, can it? It's made up. And so when you get that the decisions that you've made up really are made up, then they let go. And it's like the past lets go and the grip of the past is gone. And then your future is really free. And that's the first, that's the clearing in which a breakthrough can happen. 
Yeah, because technically there's nothing in our future. I mean, we can do anything we want, right? And yet we get stopped. There's nothing in our future except we think there's something in our future because the stories that we've made up about the past predict our future. In other words, if I've had three relationships that failed, I'll make up, I might make up something like, I'm not good in relationships. Mm -hmm. Now, that predicts the future. The three failed relationships predict nothing. But the conclusion, I'm not good in relationship, that predicts the future. Or suppose I get fired from a job and I decide I'm not competent enough. Now, getting fired predicts nothing about the future. But the decision called, I'm not competent enough, that predicts everything. So when those conclusions, decisions get identified, it's like taking the past out of the future the future's free, then the future has nothing in it, then we have the freedom to create a future that's not connected to the past, that's non-linear from the past. So you would say that anything is possible? I sure would. In fact, in our uh, flagship program, the Landmark Forum, we really start with saying that anything you want for yourself or your life is available out of your participation in the Landmark Forum. And that's not something we're saying, that's something that we really do know from our direct experience and observation with what now over a million people in so many countries around the world, regardless of culture, regardless of language, what they produce for themselves. I really do say in Atlantic education, we really do say anything's possible. So what did you found out that, that people are the most resistant of to make that anything possible possible? Well, you know, Lilo, it takes courageous thinking people to say anything's possible. You know, if we can say something's impossible, then nobody expects us to do anything about it. You know, if we can say, getting along with my boss, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Then nobody would expect us to take one action to get along with the boss. If we can say, sticking to my diet, that's impossible. I travel all the time. You can't expect me to stick to my diet. And if we can say something's impossible, then nobody would expect us to do anything about it. So it, it takes big, courageous people to go, okay, something's possible, this is possible. And then what we're left with is, we're left with the openings for action to pursue that. Mm -hmm. tell, tell us about the um, un unreasonable request and how this is essential in life. Well, let's talk to about expand, to expand really, not just to make, to ask little things from people around us, but big things. Yes, well, uh, unreasonable, let's distinguish that first. So there's what's called being reasonable. And being reasonable is when you don't have what you want in life, but you've got the reasons why not. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say, I want to take a vacation, and then you've got all the reasons. I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, I don't have anybody to watch the kids. And then you end up with your list of reasons versus having what you want. Unreasonable living is when you really have what you want no matter what the reasons are. An unreasonable request of yourself or others is a request to really have things be, like really accomplish things no matter what reasons you have for not accomplishing, no matter what reasons you have where that might, you know, might justify not accomplishing them. An unreasonable request is one for yourself or others. You say, okay, no matter what reasons we got, we're going to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. So is it just about asking people some, some crazy out there things that, you know, but you have to have a certain confidence or how you have to have a certain connection with that person, no, to be able to ask something like that? Well, communication, right. So now we're at the heart of communication, right? And at the heart of communication, is people being related. So that if we're not related, sufficiently related with people, then our no matter what communication we're trying to have, it really won't be very effective. So there's the there's the um, using communication uh, to be related, effectively related, listening to each other, speaking to each other, understanding what each other's concerns are, understanding what's important to another, if you don't understand what's important to another, if you're not addressing their concerns, then they really can't listen to you. So effective communication is based on a relationship of truly listening to each other and understanding what's important to each other. Mm, so you have to be really attentive, not in your head and thinking something else when the person is talking. 
<laughs> That's right. That's called being present, Lilo. When you know, because uh, I think we've all had the experience where somebody's talking to us, yeah. and yeah. then they get done talking, and we didn't have a clue what they said. Mm -hmm. And why we didn't have a clue what they said is because we're listening to what we're saying to ourselves about what they said. As regular as breathing, Lilo. As regular as breathing. We're talking to ourselves. It's that little voice in the back of our heads. It's always talking. It never shuts up. And it comments on everything. And it certainly comments on what other people say to us. So literally, there's never one conversation going on in time. There's what people are saying to us. And then there's what we're saying to ourselves about what they say. And most people listen to what they say to themselves about what people say versus the other person. It really is powerful to actually to listen to the other person. So, so, so it's like I'm listening to you fully, a hundred percent, being in the present moment, and and there, what happens in that in that instant? Because you're right. actually you don't know what you're gonna say next. So, how is that created? How does this work? Well, what happens then, and that's if I listen to you and I really hear what you say, then my response to you. Whatever I say next will be in a dance and appropriately correlated to what you said to me. That's what allows for effective communication. If you speak to me and I actually don't listen, I listen to what I make up about what you said. So, for instance, mm -hmm. let's say you were my boss and you said, David, your report is late. And then what I hear, like what I say to myself when you say that is, oh, she doesn't like me. You know, oh, she never gives me a chance then I'll actually respond to my conclusion called you don't like me and don't give me a chance. I might start arguing or defending myself. If I actually listen to what you said, you said simply the report is late. An appropriate response to that is yes it is or no it's not and if it is, good. It's, it's a late, I apologize for that and I promise to have my report on time next time. That's effectively communicating when you respond to what they said, not what we make up about what they said. So when you don't bring your past and your future kind of thing. That's another way to say it, exactly. Another way to say it, yes. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and so what's the, because I know Landmark puts quite a lot of emphasis on authenticity and integrity. Tell us about that and, and its role in communication and how important it is. Thanks. Well, being authentic, or you know, at Landmark, one of the things we really empower people in is being able to be authentic, true to themselves, who they really are. And again, by the time we're teens, pre-teens, teens, we've already taken on ways of being that aren't really true to ourselves. We become somebody that's not really who we are. You know, sometimes people become shy or they become quiet and reserved. But it's not who they really are. It's somebody they became. Mm -hmm. When people can see who they've become that's not who they really are, then, again, they get to be themselves. They get to be authentic, who they are really. So, But the first step is distinguishing and being able to see who became that's not who we really are. So that's a critical piece in being able to be authentically related with people. And it's a critical piece in being able to be fully self-expressed in whatever you're doing. Let's suppose you're, let's suppose you're, uh, just, uh, you're working on a project. That to be able to be fully engaged in that project also requires that, that who you are being in that situation is really true to yourself. So that's a critical piece of, of the work. Integrity is something else. Integrity is literally the state of being whole and complete. When something is literally the way it was designed to be. So uh, in terms of a human being's life, that would be the at Lamarck Education, we talk about integrity as a matter of honoring one's word. And obviously honoring what you say, honoring that uh, with our language is how we create our life with people, create our agreements with people, create conversations with people, really honoring that would be uh, essential to effective communication as well, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, but it's also integrity within ourselves, isn't it? Integrity in our relationship to ourselves and in, uh, integrity in relationship to our own word. See, we're always, like, we're always speaking how we create things. If we really deal with language, you'll notice 
marriage gets created in language, even countries get created by declaration in language. So our language is plays a bigger role in our life than most people, I think, reckon with. Mm -hmm. What we create in our speaking, you know, the statement, I love you, the statement, this is possible, those kind of statements really create the environment in which we live. So for a human being to honor their word and be present to their word, what are they saying? What is the reality that's creating? It, if a person accomplishes that, they're like very powerful and able to produce breakthrough results in their lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then, but then it means that, yeah, then people start trusting you that you're going to produce that as soon as you're going to say it then. And then they That's, support you because otherwise those words have become uh, overused, haven't they? I mean, you just don't have as much power anymore. Yeah, I think you're talking, I think one of the things that you're pointing to is really powerful, which is there's a difference between keeping a promise and honoring that you made a promise. Let's suppose I tell you I'll be home at 6 and then I get home at 6.05, right? Most people, if they do that, they walk in the door and they say something like, hi, honey, and then they wait to see if the other person responds. And if the other person responds like, hey, you're late, then they say, sorry, sorry, sorry. And they usually give a reason like traffic, all right, or, you know, got held up at work. Or if the other person doesn't say anything, they just sweep under the rug that they made that promise I'll be home at six and pretend it never, they never made it. Both those phenomena, justifying breaking our promises or ignoring that we made a promise, has people and ourselves no longer trust our word. So there's something called if you break a promise, you can still honor it. You come home at 6.05 and you just say, hey, I said I would be home at 6. It's now 6.05. I'm late and I want to acknowledge that and I promise to keep my promises in the future. That leaves the other person able to count on your word. And you know what? It lets you be able to count on your word too, which is very important. Mm -hmm. All the self-doubt I had, all the decisions I'd made about myself as I was growing up, because that's what we do as human beings. We have life events, and in those life events, we often decide. We decide things like we're not capable of certain things, or we're not powerful enough to accomplish certain things, or there's certain things we're not good at, or just certain things that are impossible for us. And when each of us can distinguish and identify those decisions we've made, and then those disappear, and we're left free to pursue what's really important to us. I had to go through that myself, and that's what we coach people in going through. Yeah, but it's like an ongoing process, isn't it? There's always something to let go of. <laughs> oh, it never stops. You know, even today, even getting ready for this interview with you, one more time I had to think through, okay, what do I think I'm not good at, and what do I think is not, is not, I'm not going to be good enough at, and you know, it's right here, right now, today. It's never, it never stops. Uh -huh. So you have this little process that you also do, because the landmark form, from my understanding, is, uh, is 100, 200 or more people get. Hello, David. Hello, Lou. Good to have you. You are a, a communication expert. You led millions of people to have breakthrough in their lives. So it's really, really great to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful to be with you. So, so tell me about, about your, your work. Tell me about what it is, how it feels for you to be, uh, how it is to be a Landmark Forum leader out in the world. Well, Lilo, our work at Landmark Education is uh, undebatable in the, uh, its success rate at having people produce breakthroughs, both in their personal lives, in their career lives, and in their communities. So uh, to watch literally thousands and thousands of people all over the world move to new levels of self-expression, freedom, power, that is fulfilling and that is our work and it is wonderful to watch. So what did you have to give up yourself in your own life to, to be in this place right now of doing this and helping other people transform their lives? Well, what I had to give up in my own life, of course, was gathering together and, and sharing their lives and, 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 and what you call breakthrough, right? There is, mm -hmm. They make breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. Well, what allows for a breakthrough result is really to have some new opening, to see some new opening that you didn't see before, that there's some new pathway to accomplish something that literally you didn't see before. So it never comes from what we already know. It never comes from the past. It is, it is a process of letting the past go and then 